An active summertime pattern continuing with severe weather and a flooding threat for many as the tropics try to heat up by next week. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Friday. Hopefully we're having a wonderful end to the work week out there and getting ready for the weekend. A couple of threats we need to monitor for the weekend. Severe weather and flooding really uh, are the two main ones. And then as we get towards next week, Spoiler alert, more of the same. However, I am watching the potential for maybe some tropical development, uh, you know, pretty close to home. So we'll talk about that in today's video. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date with the ever uh, changing and latest uh, weather data here and my analysis of that data. And, uh, you know, we're getting uh, pretty good into hurricane season now. However, we're still. Um, a good way to go before we hit peak season. So if things seem relatively calm, you know, that's not unusual for the early to middle part of July. And uh, crazy to think that we're, we're even close to the middle of July. But uh, sure enough, this month going by just as quick as the last. All right, let's go ahead and start talking weather. We'll start with our satellite loop like we normally do. Uh, we'll use our water vapor today. And again, this is a tool that we use pretty often here on the channel. And it's doing a pretty good job, I think, of showing where the weather makers are right now, as well as a look at the tropics and why maybe we don't have a whole lot going on right now. Uh, we'll start with the tropics. Uh, one reason we don't really have much of anything going on is right here. This is where we have all the moisture right now. And we don't really have any storm systems in that uh, moisture field. We also have some wind shear still out there. Uh, things just not overall very conducive for tropical development at this moment. However, as we go into next week, this frontal system that has worked through the eastern United States that brought all sorts of heavy rain and flash flood warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings. Heck, we even had a surprise tornado warning yesterday uh, not far from Savannah. That is now finally working offshore. You can see it here. See where we have a deeper uh, water vapor and convection beginning to bubble? Well, this could try to once again spin something up by the time we get to next week. Uh, and that could be anywhere from the southeast coastline into the Gulf. So a uh, very similar setup to how Chantal formed uh, a week or two ago. And uh, we obviously saw how impactful that storm was and um, could see something maybe somewhat similar. Now, we got time to watch it. Nothing immediately jumping out, but that will be something we discuss later on in today's video. Outside of that, we've got kind of two key storm systems. We've got one big trough now coming down into Montana. We've got another trough and low pressure system into the central United States. Both of those systems firing up surface low pressures and frontal systems. Now, eventually, uh, these two are going to uh, kind of merge together, if you will, up over the Great Lakes and over portions of Canada, and that's going to create another front that's already kind of being created that is once again going to stall out over portions of the country and bring another threat for daily thunderstorms and the potential of flooding rain. So, uh, unfortunately, that's been the big theme in July has been flash floods, and uh, I think that, uh, again, looks to be the main weather topic here going forward. What are we seeing out there right now? Do we have a lot of watches, warnings? Is radar full? Well, uh, relatively quiet, all things considered. We are still running. Uh, it looks like uh, flood watches are in effect still from Cedar Rapids to Davenport, Iowa City, Des Moines, over towards uh, Galesburg, Burlington, Rockford, and then uh, you know not far from Chicago here. A lot of heavy rain has already fallen over this region. More on the way. So now, like I said, that continues to be uh, the main threat, and you can see those thunderstorms already continuing to develop out here. We're going to see more of those these uh, this afternoon with severe weather potential. Uh, southeast, uh, typical afternoon thunderstorms are going to develop. Same thing for portions of the northeast. Uh, and other than that, folks, radar relatively quiet. We've got, obviously, pretty rainy uh, action in Florida. That's not unusual. Uh, we've got uh, some heat back out west and even a little bit of a wildfire concern here in these pink boxes. So uh, that's quite, uh, what we're seeing out there right now. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at our upper level map like we normally do, break down our severe weather outlooks, and go from there. Well, no surprise, uh, our usual vorticity map about halfway up in the atmosphere pictured here, doing a pretty good job at showing uh, where we're seeing the active weather. And uh, it lines up pretty well with what I showed you on satellite loop as well. I told you we had two storm systems. Uh, here's one of them right here, and then here's another dip in the jet stream, both in the northern tier of the country. And that's been the theme, folks. We've had these big storms crossing really along the U.S.-Canada border, uh, continuing to kind of traverse that general beltway. And uh, then what happens is uh, the upper-level storms create surface storms. Those surface storms create fronts. And then what we get are these ribbons of vorticity, kind of like right here and uh, right back here, of uh, just boundaries that end up setting up shop that kind of just lose steam and end up stalling out over different parts of the country. And that helps to create more afternoon storms. And again, that potential of, uh, you know, excessive rainfall. Uh, so let's time it out for you. Where are these storms going? Yeah, like I said, more of the same, kind of traversing the U.S.-Canada border. Now, by the time we get to this weekend, this is Saturday into Sunday. Uh, this is a pretty feisty upper-level system for summertime standards, becoming negatively tilted, as we say. 
Uh, and that's a sign that that could lead to a pretty strong storm system. Now, the storm itself probably going to be up into Canada here. But once again, you can see this little tiny ribbon of vorticity. That's going to be the front associated with it. It's going to try to cross portions of the country. And I think by, again, around early next week, towards the end of this weekend, uh, kind of stall out over portions of the southern plains. And you can see that here in Oklahoma and Texas. And that unfortunately could again lead to excessive rainfall as that continues to be a bit of a trigger mechanism uh, for afternoon storms. But the storm itself uh, will definitely lead to severe weather as well. So you can see those maps here. Here's today's outlook, uh, level one, or excuse me, level two rather out of five. Uh, they are pictured in yellow from Chicago to southwestern uh, Michigan into southern Wisconsin, portions of Iowa, northern Missouri, even back into the Kansas City area and Topeka. And then another little area here from Cheyenne back over to Sterling, Fort Collins, and Ray, Colorado. So what are the threats today? Well, the tornado threat today, pretty appreciable for July standards um, here up into northern Illinois, portions of Iowa. Uh, again, you have that negatively tilted trough becoming, uh, well, more negatively tilted and um that's helping to really increase the lift in the atmosphere, the spin in the atmosphere, and all the ingredients you would generally need for severe weather. So need to watch for the tornado risk out here today. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't roll it out over here into the front range either towards Colorado. But uh, other than that, the wind threat going to be the other big story today for many of us back out into the uh, Midwestern United States and even a little bit of hail going to be possible. Now By tomorrow, uh, that storm system again pulling up into Canada and becoming negatively tilted but still enough lift, still enough energy, another level two out of five risk here for much of eastern Michigan and all the way back down into Toledo, Fort Wayne, and uh, portions there of the Ohio-Indiana border, at least kind of the northern half of the uh, state border there. So again, you can see that here. Tornado threat tomorrow, uh, you can see, is once again going to be on the map from Detroit, Toledo, again, Fort Wayne, Lansing, Flint, Bay City. Yeah, watch out for that tornado potential tomorrow. This could even get bumped up a little bit. Would not surprise me. Uh, again, we're going to definitely watch that potential uh, out into that part of the country for your Saturday. And then we get to Sunday. By that point, the storm system itself, again, pulling up far enough into Canada that we've only got a marginal risk associated with the main portion of it into uh, the northern mid-Atlantic up into portions of the northeast. And then also watching, again, this southern section. Like I told you, that front's going to break apart, stall out here. It's going to increase just enough wind shear and lift. Uh, that, once again, could see severe weather from St. Louis to Memphis, Nashville, all the way back down towards the Rio Grande. That does include Dallas, Fort Worth, Lubbock, Abilene, and uh, much there of um, kind of West Texas. So that's what we're seeing in the severe weather department. Let's time it out for you now with our latest mesoscale model. Well, here's the latest run of that high resolution rapid refresh model doing a pretty good job, I'd say, of uh, kind of time in this out for us. Uh, and we'll kind of show you that here. So time above my head is in Eastern time. So here we go by three o'clock this afternoon uh, here in your Eastern time zones, two o'clock out into the plains. Uh, yeah, here's that one storm system or one of the two that we're watching up into the Midwest. And uh, yeah, showing some pretty good storms beginning to fire. And that, again, could lead to an all hazard severe weather event today. Watching for tornadoes. Large hail and strong straight line winds could work through during your rush hour traffic. Uh, you know, As we're in and out the week, a lot of folks probably heading home from work. We'll definitely need to monitor this out into portions of Iowa. Uh, by the time we go into the evening, again, this is 6, 7 o'clock. Uh, probably starting as more of a single to supercell kind of event and then congealing into a convective complex, I'd say, by the time the sun starts to go down. Still running all hazards with that, but especially strong wind could really kick in, I'd say, uh, by the time that that kind of evolution of that storm begins out into Iowa. Uh, elsewhere, still have some afternoon pop-up storms from the northeast all the way down into the southeast and into Florida. Uh, good news, the coverage today does not look as widespread as it has been the past two days. And we talked about that flooding threat in the Carolinas. Had plenty of flash flooding events uh, due to it, so that forecast definitely verified. And as we discussed, I said Friday should hopefully calm down a little bit in the rainfall chances, and uh, that's what it looks like for today. Now, not to say you won't see rain, I just don't think it'll be as widespread. So instead of maybe a 60%, 70% chance of rain like many of us saw uh, the past couple of days, probably more of a 30%, 40% chance today uh, for a lot of us, uh, again, east of the Appalachia chain and into the southeast. All right, so keep it moving ahead here. You can see again what's uh, left of that storm uh, into the Midwest becomes a big line of storms and showers by the time we're waking up tomorrow. And that surface low once again beginning to crank up. Now, here we go. Saturday morning, this is whenever things kind of break apart a little bit. You've got the surface low right up here into Michigan uh, and Wisconsin. That's going to create the one severe weather threat tomorrow back out again into East Michigan and uh, portions of Indiana and Ohio. South of there, though, we've got the front associated with this. It kind of begins to break off as the upper level energy displaces itself from the front, and it's going to then stall out here right over portions of 
uh, the kind of south uh, central United States. And that's going to become a new focal point for storms to fire up. So you can see that here uh, by your Saturday afternoon, two distinct areas I'm watching for severe weather potential and higher rainfall potential. Uh, here's your surface low. Again, anything right along that up into Canada and back down into Michigan, going to run a tornado threat, a wind threat, and a hail threat. But again, do not sleep on the tornado potential. We've got a good amount of wind shear associated with that storm tomorrow. Now, south of there into the southern plains, uh, less so of a tornado potential, but strong wind, heavy rainfall that could lead to flooding will be a concern back out that way. And unfortunately, uh, again, Texas hit so hard already this month. I think the worst of it going to stay north of the Austin area that got uh, the brunt of that flooding to start the month. But still, we'll need to watch that tomorrow. Also, it looks a little bit more widespread in the thunderstorm activity into the mid-Atlantic. Uh, again, probably getting a little bit of help from the surface low, creating that uh, front uh, frontalysis. The front's kind of dying is what that means, but still uh, enough lift from that that we could get some enhanced rainfall chances here into the mid-Atlantic, the southeast, and up into the northeast for your Saturday, at least compared to today. Uh, and then we go by Sunday morning and uh, you know we'll see what Sunday holds. And we'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. All right, well, that was the severe weather side of things. Uh, the flooding threat, also obviously something we've been talking about, something I'm still monitoring. Uh, let's talk about it a little bit here. And you can see uh, this is our precipitable water map. So the brighter the colors or the more pinkish and purplish you see, uh, the more moisture that's in the atmosphere for any storms that form to kind of ring out. Uh, and this is why we really get flooding in the summertime more than any other month. Uh, besides maybe spring whenever all the snowpack is melting and things like that. But uh, it just when it rains, it pours, you know, as the old adage goes and uh, the Luke Combs song as well, I guess. But um, uh, that, that's basically what's happening. And that's, you know, what's leading to so much of the flooding that we've seen. Also, in the summertime, you begin to lose some upper level uh, winds that would carry storms. A lot of times they sit over the same place and just wring themselves out. And that could lead to heavy rainfall. And you can see still a lot of precipitable water going on here. Uh, for many of us. So today into tonight, again, watching Iowa, uh, northern Illinois could see a flooding potential, a lot of precipitable water in the southeast today as well. So again, isolated flash flooding there. But notice what happens as we move this ahead, a bit of drier air works into the Midwest after that storm system. Again, probably even the surface dew point humidity will come down and that precipitable water you can see will come down, but still quite high down into Texas and into Oklahoma, uh, into much of the southeast where widespread rain will be possible. And uh, will definitely be something that uh, could lead to flooding. And then notice what's happening here into the southeast. See these really high values kick up. This is by Tuesday and Wednesday. This is what I'm watching for the potential of maybe some tropical development. And we'll talk about it more in depth, but just going to tease it here a little bit. Yeah, we're going to talk about that more coming up in just a moment. But first, uh, let's take a look at those flooding outlook maps for the next couple of days. Here's today. Like I said, Iowa, Northern Illinois going to be the real focal point. Again, could even see it out here into portions of Colorado, Nebraska, and uh, north uh, western Kansas there. Could even see a little bit of flooding. Southeast, lower threat today than we have had, but non-zero. So uh, continue to watch that for uh, your Friday. Saturday, this is when it starts to pick back up in the southern plains. I know you hate to see it. You don't want to see Texas under the gun here. Uh, again, though, the place that got hit so hard, unfortunately, and just that absolute you know, heart-wrenching disaster that happened was out near Kerrville, uh, Texas. So you're not in the bullseye of this out that way. However, could still see excessive rainfall. But I think the worst of it going to be the Red River Valley, Oklahoma City, Lubbock, Amarillo, Abilene, Carlsbad, Roswell, another area out there into New Mexico that got hit very hard recently by flooding. Uh, so we need to watch that for your Saturday. Into the east, again, could happen. Not as high of a threat as it has been, luckily. Uh, but still a non-zero chance of excessive rainfall. Your Sunday, again, the Southern Plains still becoming a focal point for that potential, kind of the same regions I just listed. And then up here, another area into the Mid-Atlantic and into the Appalachia chain from uh, uh, Northern Virginia all the way up north into New York as uh, that front, uh, as that upper level system, excuse me, is pulling away into Canada, still leaving enough of a frontal system behind. Could see widespread rain there for your Sunday. All right, let's go ahead and zoom things out again. Let's talk about the tropics more in depth and how that could lead to tropical development by the time we get into next week. Upper level height anomaly map uh, showing again kind of more of the same. I just want to reiterate the same points here. Uh, so the blue areas basically is where we have troughing or storminess um, kind of going on in the atmosphere. And uh, the red slash orange areas is where we have ridging warmer temperatures of uh, somewhat more quiet weather, although not all of the time does that uh, end up that way. Uh, the point here, though, being is notice all the blue kind of staying up 
north, excuse me, uh, here through the northern tier of the country and uh, elsewhere, pretty typical summertime zonal flow. Uh, so there's nothing crazy going on, you know, in the southern part of the country, we'll say, but the northern tiers who just keeps getting smacked by these storm systems that have this severe weather potential. So, uh, you know, that's one little tidbit for the northern part of the country. Uh, but elsewhere, we're still going to see rain out of this pattern. And again, that could lead to tropical formation uh, by the time we get to next week. So here we go. Uh, we'll kind of pick up where we left off on Sunday, we said. Uh, here's your Sunday afternoon. Here's that storm system again now pulling up well into Canada. Uh, the front associated with it, again, still going to lead to a pretty big ribbon of rainfall uh, potentially in the northeast. That's why we're watching for flooding potential there. We've got a leftover frontal boundary down into the, the southern plains. Again, going to watch for flooding potential there as well. Now, uh, we still got this stalled out front from today's uh, or from the recent front we've had into the, the eastern United States, that slow moving boundary we've been talking about. That stalled off the coast like I showed you to start the video. And then this next storm is going to stall off the coast. And you put all that together, folks. Uh, that's a recipe for a pretty good area of spin here off the southeast coast and into the Gulf. And you'll notice rainfall chances begin to increase by the time we get to next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, time frame out that way. And while that's happening, another big storm coming on through the northern tier that once again could create severe weather potential. So uh, looking like a double-edged sword next week, we've got southern tropical energy and northern stream uh, more severe weather-esque energy ongoing uh, by the time we get there. So you can see the southeast, yeah, starts to get pretty rainy here uh, by next week and also pretty rainy into the northern tier. Again, the Dakotas, Minnesota, uh, you know, Nebraska, Iowa, some of the same areas that have gotten hit hard could get hit hard again. That's uh, what next week looks to hold. Uh, now, we'll show you this. Uh, in terms of southeast tropical development, again, I'm not overly concerned, but ocean temperatures are warm out here. Moisture content is high. If we can keep the wind shear at a minimum, we could see development. So the uh, GFS ensemble showing that here by uh, Wednesday into Tuesday of early next week. Uh, low pressure beginning to develop. Um, has tropical origins for sure. Will it get a name to be determined? Uh, but um, you know, something could try to get going here over the southeastern United States. And again, if it's a little, a little more offshore, it could become a little more tropical. It could be more offshore in the Gulf direction as well. Uh, still plenty of time to figure that out. But definitely, whatever this area of disturbed weather is by early next week, likely to kind of stick around for some time here. Again, tries to get in the Gulf here by Wednesday, Thursday. Excuse me, you see all these little uh, dots on the map. Those are areas that the ensembles are projecting we could have low pressure uh, beginning to develop. Uh, so we'll watch it, we'll monitor it. Either way, uh, the concern would be heavy rain. You can see the rainfall forecast for the next um, about seven to 10 days ahead. And uh, yeah, it looks rainy down here into Florida due to that system. And we're talking pretty good rainfall totals from the Panhandle back to New Orleans. We've got heavy rain into the Carolinas, Virginia. Heavy rain back up into the Midwest. So uh, a rainy pattern looks to continue to be the concern, meaning flooding will continue to be the highest threat that we watch out for. And again, uh, some severe weather potential like we're seeing out there today and tomorrow. All right, folks, that's all I got for you on this Friday. Again, hopefully you had a good week out there. Hopefully getting ready for the weekend. Probably a little bit of a shorter video, but um, I'm trying to conserve my energy here for when the hurricane season really gets going. And inevitably, we have to double up on videos and uh, do some live streams and all that. Also, I am taking a summer class right now. Uh, so try to conserve my energy for uh, for that. But uh, all right. Well, that's all I got for y'all. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe out there. Stay weather aware. I'll see you all tomorrow.